Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mike's Magical Military Adventures. I'm Mike B, of course, and today we're going to be talking about day one of actual basic training when you go downrange from reception. Um, we left off last time with the public video about just how reception was, just the two weeks of boringness and mind-numbing boredom and fights and all this stuff. And then the last video I made was actually a Patreon and channel member exclusive about the night before we shipped and what an incident that happened at that point that made me upset and made other people upset for different reasons. And um, yeah, so if you're a Patreon supporter or a channel member, you can view those every second or third one of these videos in this series where it's going to be a Patreon or channel member exclusive for a couple of reasons. A, to reward people who are supporting my channel and allow me to make really cool content that I've been wanting to make for years and haven't been able to. Um, crowdfunding really does help with that. And then I don't have to take corporate sponsorships and make those annoying things. So self-funding and crowdfunding, that's a that's the way to go. That's why I want to keep it. And you guys are making that possible. So I give you guys a little bone every now and then. And those will be stories that are more um, kind of either personal, that I don't necessarily want out completely in the world, and, uh, and or dark. And kind of like the last one was fairly dark. And um, kind of gets into the mentality that people have when you go into survival mode. But anyway... So that's that. We don't have to do that at the end of the video now. We'll get to, we'll get to it. This was a very long day uh, for a bunch of different reasons. One, it's, it's, a, it's mixed emotions because it's nice to get the hell out of reception. You know, that place is, that's where like your mind, your, sane, your sanity goes to die in reception. It's not fun. It's just so boring and stupid and uh, awkward and whatever. So on one hand, it's good to get out, but on the second hand, it's like, okay, this is actually it. Um, the time for your basic training doesn't start until you actually hit day zero in your training company. So it's like, okay, now we'll actually be one step closer to the countdown of getting out of here in 16 weeks. There were already people that quit in reception. Um, in reception, they quit. They weren't even there a week, and they said, I'm done, I want to go home. We'll talk about that and uh, why that's not necessarily a good idea. And why the quickest way out of basic training and reception is to graduate. So we'll definitely be talking about those guys later, if you get what I'm saying. Um, anyway, so it was just like, okay, let's get out. So we wake up at like 03 or 3.30 or something like that. After getting screwed out of a couple hours of sleep that they were going to give us, that we probably would have benefited from. So anyway, we get up, we go into this classroom that I keep talking about, and they gave us our personal bags back that we came down there with that they confiscate and throw in a room for the duration of reception. It's got your phone and all your other shit in there. And they're like, don't use your phone. Pfft, yeah, whatever. Right? Uh, definitely uh, sent a couple texts and whatever. Uh, that's another thing is we didn't get a lot of phone calls in reception. We didn't even... I think we got one to say we made it down there. And it was like literally, hi, I'm at Fort Benning. I'm safe. Goodbye. And it was on a payphone that you had to use a phone card for back in the old days. Um, and that was that was it. It was that little bit of contact. There were people that would sneak to the phones at night. They got caught and they got into deep shit, so don't do that. Um, but now I guess you can have your cell phone, so that's different. And so yeah, you get your phone back and all that stuff. So you're just sitting in this classroom for a couple hours until it's like, you know, hurry up and wait time. And then we went to chow and I had a light breakfast because I had a feeling that it was going to be a rough day. And I was right, but we'll get there. So we went to chow, went back, sat around in the classroom. And then they said, okay, we are going to march out to this field um, that's in the middle of kind of the whole area. And we marched out into this field. And there we got to see the people from the other reception battalions that were there. And there were four platoon-sized elements. And we were, you know, it was one, two, it was a square. Everybody was facing in. And they had all the, the cadre, all the drill sergeants from um, 30th AG, which, no offense to them, but the drill sergeants in the reception battalion are either guys that have gotten in trouble and got sent there and are just on their way out of that area before whatever, or they don't do their job very well, they're kind of out of shape, you know, stuff like that. That's, a, that's who was kind of there when we were in 30th AG. They don't really yell a lot. They don't really want to be there. Um, they're not the actual drill sergeants that you would think of. This will come into play in a little bit too. I might have to chunk this up into two two videos or I'll just make this a really long video because there's so much more to cover. So either way, either way you guys will get the info. But um, yeah, so we get out in this field and we're just standing there, standing there, standing there. All of a sudden I see kind of off to the side, 
We had oh we had stacked our our duffel bags up. So we have a duffel bag, a laundry bag full of shit after we cleaned out our barracks and stuff, and your personal bag. So don't take a big personal bag down there. You'll thank me later. Uh, you don't need that much shit anyway. You need the clothes that you're wearing, and that's about it. So, um, yeah, we had we had our our laundry bags and our personal bags on us, and we had stacked up our duffel bags over there. It was like along this little path, probably about 50, 60 yards away from where we were standing. So we're standing here and standing there and standing there, and all of a sudden, the first sergeant comes, and the, the commander and the first sergeant or something walk into the middle of the formation, and they take over from the 30th AG guys, and we each had our drills, our respective drill sergeants standing in front of us from the reception battalion, and the new drills were standing behind the formation. They looked a little bit different. They were in very good shape. They were wearing their hats like down like that, and they had blue discs behind the uh, the U.S. Army crest on there, which denotes that they are infantry, and those guys are a different breed. So these guys are, you know, 30th AG drill sergeants are kind of just standing there, and um, all of a sudden the first sergeant goes, post and you know they do this and the new drill sergeants come out and it was like a black cloud came over because these guys they go from looking like this to looking like you would expect like the fucking blood they want blood it makes the grass grow let's do this and we're like okay this is gonna be great and so the first sergeant's like you know go get your duffel bags blah, blah blah something like that and then we so we ran over there got those and they're like you're gonna you're gonna put your duffel bag on your back and you're going to carry your laundry bag out in front of you and whatever, like that, that shit. That's how you're going to march. And we're like, I'm looking around, I'm like, where's the buses? Where's the cattle cars? Where's whatever is going to take us there? And everybody's kind of like, well, what are we doing? And all of a sudden, our senior, I ended up um, being in the platoon that was the first. So his platoon left face, and he goes, forward march. And we're like, okay, we're going up to the cattle cars. And all of a sudden, the other platoons are following. So we go down this road, right you know, whatever, I forgot the freaking commands already, um, you know, right turn or right face or whatever, or, Jesus, I totally forgot that, it's been so long, and anyway, so we go right, and all of a sudden we go up left, and there's this giant ass hill that was, I mean, it's not that big, but it seemed like it was, so it's August 20th, we're wearing ACUs, a lot of us are fat and out of shape, um, and we're marching to our training battalion. We're not taking cattle cars. And I'm like, this is fucked up. Uh, you know, I was, I was looking forward to that experience. But no, we're, we're marching. We're marching and we're all out of step. And we're all winded. Um, or not all of us, but a lot of people were. Because you're carrying this shit and it's heavy and it's really hot out. And as we're walking, these drill sergeants are starting in. They're starting to get more energy. And they're like, keep it the fucking step! You know, screaming really loud. And they're picking on people. They're like, there's this guy that was uh, older than me, uh, quite a bit actually. He was in a different unit, but he was from Oklahoma, and he was kind of falling behind. I think he was like 35. And they they yelled out his name. They're like, "You fucking old man! You fucking you better stick it here. Get up there. Keep up. Get up the hill. Let's go." Start starting to yell more and more, and things are getting louder, and people are starting to huff and puff. So we get to the top of this seemingly never ending fucking hill. Again, it's not that big, but it just seemed like it was that big. And we get to the top, and because we hadn't seen any of actual Sand Hill, because you're down in this little like crater, basically, in the reception battalion. So we get up, and then we see the barracks. And I'm like, oh, shit, we're actually going there? That's like right out of reception. And um, so, yeah, we see the, the rope tower, the rope thing, and then the um, PT field. All that stuff, and we marched down the road. It's about a quarter mile, and we were just sucking at that point, sweating profusely. Everybody's just like, oh, my God, and there's more yelling. Like, there's more people getting yelled at, names being called, people being singled out. And we actually marched down to what is called the company training area, the CTA from here on out, if you don't know what that means, and I don't explain it every video. And this is the part where it's like it hits you. You're like, fuck, this is it. So we go in there, and we're all just in this big gaggle fuck, and they're trying to make us stand straight. They're like, you guys are fucked, you guys are fucked. We get in there, and all of a sudden, it was just the four senior drill sergeants that had brought us up. Now, there's fucking one, two, three, three drills per platoon. So there's a total of like 12, or but they had some reservists there and everything. So there's probably about 15 drill sergeants now. And then our, which turned out to be my senior, goes up with the bullhorn and says... Welcome to Charlie 254. When I call your fucking name, you're going to come up and stand on this line right here. And I didn't know that they were doing it alphabetically. So my last name begins with a B. 
So I was going to be in first platoon. So I'm sitting there just trying not to draw any attention. The first name gets called. I forgot who it was. Oh, I know who it is. I'm not going to say his name. And he, I actually still have him on Facebook. He got fucked with a lot. That was bad. He gets called and there are literally six or seven drill sergeants on him as he's running, waddling at that point up to this position. They're like, you better fucking run faster, spitting on him and shit. And I'm like, oh God, this is, this is it. And I'm, I'm not that far off. So I was number, um, number 26 in the, in the platoon. So they call your name and you say, move in drill sergeant. And then they, as I did, it was like, my name. And it's like, go. And so I started running and it's just so awkward. And there was again, six of them. And they were just, you fat fucking turd piece of shit. You're fucking move faster, faster, faster. You're not moving fast enough. Fucking screaming all at the same time. And I was thinking in my head at that point, not trying to sell like a badass, but I was literally thinking, I'm like, well, here it, it's happening. This is it. My mom yells worse than this though. Like my mom could scream. So I was like, I can probably handle this and I can handle the yelling, but that's not that helpful. Uh, that's just one part of it. Some people couldn't handle the yelling and we'll get to that. So I get up on there and then they're off on the next guy. So I'm like, Whew. and we're standing there for a little bit and I'm looking and we're at attention. We got our bags and stuff. And all of a sudden our junior walks out, our, who would be our junior drill sergeant. So this guy, if you're, if you're, if you're been in combat arms, you're going to know exactly what I was thinking when I saw this guy walk out. He was about five foot five. He was fairly small, but still stacked, you know, shaped like that. He's an E5. Okay. Not a lot of E5 drill sergeants floating around out there. And he's wearing a first Marine division combat patch. So I, I immediately recognize that. I'm like, Oh fuck. This guy was a Marine. And he, and there's like, I think there's a handful of people, army personnel that are authorized for the first or second Marine division combat patches. So nine chance, 9.9 .9 chance out of 10. He's a, he was a Marine and he comes out and I'm like, okay, here we go. And he's got this walk about him and he just goes, all right, ladies, I'm so-and-so and drill sergeant so-and-so. I'll be your drill, drill sergeant for the next 16 weeks. So we're going to, and he's talking. He's the only one out of all these, this chaos and all this shit that's going on in the background. Who's talking? Now, that scared the fuck out of me more than somebody coming out fucking screaming. And he starts talking. He goes, all right, so I'm just going to do some basic instructions, right? You're going to take your laundry or your duffel bag and and put it down. Or no, 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 yeah. What the hell was it? No, it was, um, we were told that we were going to have to hold our laundry bag above our head. So pack that really light and put everything in our duffel bag. Well, it was the other way around. Or was it standby for technical difficulties? No, we were told that we were going to have to lift our duffel bags above our head, so pack everything into our laundry bag and pack our duffel bags light. That's what they told us. Because he says, all right, put your duffel bags down by your right foot and go ahead and get that laundry bag straight, straight arm above your head like this and hold it, hold it, hold it. And so we're like, oh, shit, all of our stuff is in this laundry bag. So it's not that long before, you know, you get jiggly jello arms. And, and then he starts getting a little bit louder, like, I see a fucking arm bend. You're fucked. You know? Okay. Oh, oh, you, you want to bend your fucking arms? He rips this guy's name tape off. He's like, got you for later. You're fucked. And then there, I mean, meanwhile, all this is going on. People are getting their names cogs. We're in the first platoon. So they got to go through four platoons of like 50 something guys each. They're screaming. We could barely hear what this guy's saying. Cause he's just talking. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And all of a sudden everybody gets to their thing. And then we've got more drill sergeants on us going up and down the ranks. And they're just you know, hold your shit. Okay, you don't want to fucking do that. Get in the front leading rest position, which is push-up position. And they start screaming at that shit. And then this guy's still talking, but our senior, and then there was another reservist there cycling out doing his annual training, was freaking yelling too. And people were just everywhere. And there was just chaos. And then we had to go over and get Gatorade off of the table, which is, it's just basically how well do you follow instructions, but it's really fast paced and it's really loud and really stressful. So at this point, we're all huffing and puffing and <laughs> And I remember um, we went over, grabbed the Gatorade, came back, and then they dropped us. We were doing push-ups again, just screaming. And this lasted like probably an hour and a half. It was pretty insane. It was just, it was just, you know, you're not doing anything right, blah, blah, blah. There's two types of privates. They're smart and they're strong. You guys are going to be real fucking strong by the end of this cycle. What the fuck are you doing? And um, we were just going, and then, you know, some of us were out of shape more than others, but I was out of shape pretty bad. And we're sitting there like, like trying to grunt to stay up because we don't want to get punished more. And I remember the, the junior was like, 
We're not making a fucking gay porno in here. Shut the fuck up. Stop making noise. And I was like, oh, Jesus. I want to laugh at that, but I'm in too much pain. So anyway, this goes on for a while. And, I mean, this is just, it's loud and it's insane. And then we had to cycle through the phones as this was going on and call our parents to tell them we had arrived at our training and that we were going to be sending them a packet in the mail. There's this little script you read, I'm safe, goodbye. And we did that as they were screaming. I couldn't even hear. I forgot my phone card, too. I packed it away. So I had to call collect, and it took me longer, and they were screaming. And they're, you dumb fuck, why don't you just have a fucking phone card? Hurry the fuck up. You know, and it, it was just chaotic. It was really chaotic. And I was just like, oh, everybody's trying to run around doing the right thing. But you're, you're never going to do the right thing. Just accept that. Everything you do is going to be wrong for a reason. And this happens. I, I think I'll trim this into a couple videos because this is going to take a while. This is the first day. The rest of it, I mean, there are days that I'll talk about. But the rest of it kind of blends together fairly well. And it does. it's not going to require this much detail. But this is the, this is the actual very important day where you start being broken down more so than you were by just the boredom and reception. This is where you start physically breaking down. And it was very intense physically, and it was very intense mentally for a lot of people. The mental part isn't what got me. It was the physical part. And it was very challenging for myself to not, you know, try to get noticed, right? You don't want to get noticed there. And uh, I definitely got noticed. Not on, Not on the... Not at that particular point, but in a little bit. I'll talk about after the initial shark attack happened that lasts, you know, it, it lasts a while and it seems like it's taking forever and it's never going to end. And then we ended, we ended up going up to our barracks and then it's not probably what you'd expect. Um, it was, it was interesting, but I'll talk about that in the next video because I want to keep these relatively, you know, under 20 minutes would be nice. I don't know how long I ran on those. So that is the shark attack that the first part of it, the first day that they don't do anymore um, because it's stressful or something. I don't know, understand why they do it. Again, I'm not one of these people that talk shit. Oh, back in my day, I'm just going to tell you what happened. It's different now. I don't know if it's better or worse. We'll see. Um, but yeah, it's just, that was my experience and that was my perspective of what happened. It was interesting seeing people's reaction to getting yelled at sometimes for the first time. Uh, in their lives, and it was very interesting to see how um, just different people reacted to stress, and that wasn't even, like, hardcore stress. That was, I mean, I guess to some people it was. Anyway, I'll talk about when we went upstairs into our barracks next, in the next video. Um, but, yeah, that was basically the shark attack that you hear about. And it's a lot more stressful and stuff when you're there than when you just talk about it. It was... It's the beginning of the end of your uh, civilian life at that point. That's when you know, you know, I'm sitting here going, every, I think most people do this. You just go, what the fuck am I here for? Why did I do this? Why am I here? What the fuck? Out of every place I could be in the world right now, I am here. And why is that? How the fuck did I get myself into this situation? But it's mental. It's a game. Don't say those words, though. I'll, I'll make that an exclusive Um the next few days were pretty interesting and fun, so they'll be it'll be kind of stuck on that in segments of videos. But we'll go we'll do day or part two of day one in the next video. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you on the next episode.